Okay, so before we get into the subject of today's video, which is why yet again I'm wearing this outfit and not using my more common avatar, though this is pretty common at this point, on Friday I released a two-hour reading story called The Dunnage Horror. Please go check it out, it took a while to record. I'd greatly appreciate it. Second, there's a new video up on the Moisky Live channel about possibly holding a vote of no confidence against Boris Johnson and putting Jeremy Corbyn in as a caretaker prime minister until a general election happens. Link to both down below. I'm also streaming on Twitch tonight. Go check it out if you're interested. Now today I want to talk about Shannon Souter. If I have mispronounced your name in any way, I am not remotely sorry. And I say that having bothered to read a whole number of articles on you to try and ascertain what you had actually done. And I'm not going to pronounce where you're from either, because I know I'm going to get Blegauri wrong. Hmm. Shannon Souter, or Souter, Souter. Let's just call her Shannon. Or, better, woman. Woman harmed a six-month-old baby girl over a period of two months at another place in Scotland. Now, she had pled guilty to assaulting a girl to severe injury, permanent impairment, and to the danger of her life. Woman had claimed the injuries had come from rocking the child gently, and that she may have bumped her head off a table. Experts during the trial indicated that the injuries came from shaking and over-the-top gripping, which would have led to fractured ribs, fractured skull, fractured ankle, brain damage, and possible permanent blindness, all of which this unnamed child has. After pleading guilty, woman was sentenced. I'm going to read a part of the statement from Lord Turnbull, the judge, before we get to the sentence, because the sentence is in and of itself one of the biggest jokes you could ever tell. Something that tells you, yes, this definitely happened in a Scottish court. So Lord Turnbull said that she has a history of depression and other personal issues at the time. She punishes herself daily and will continue to do so. I think there is little the court can do by way of punishment that is greater than what she has imposed on herself. Now, I want you all to take a moment and try and work this out. Over a two-month period, she abused a child, causing near-permanent blindness, possibly even broken skull, ribs, and ankle. The prognosis is poor. This child is going to be handicapped because of what she did. But what this lady has done has been deemed by the judge because of her own proactive behaviour, to make amends by harming herself because of her own mental health concerns, which is cliche at this point, by the way. Every time I've covered a case where a woman has abused a child, it has been fobbed off as mental health, okay, no prison. That's not how this works. I know there are many different types of depression, and perhaps this person was cutting herself. That doesn't mean she was making amends for it, and I don't think there is ever a circumstance where she can truly make amends for what she did to a child, a newborn no less. So to continue to the actual sentence, the judge said, in light of factors and the clearly vouched mental health difficulties, I am satisfied the public duty does not require me to pass a sentence which would incarcerate woman. The circumstances are so unusual that a degree of understanding and some mercy leads to the conclusion that it is neither appropriate or necessary to impose a custodial sentence. X. So what is the exact sentence? Well, the sentence is 300 hours of unpaid work as part of a three-year community payback order. This involves her having no unsupervised contact with underage children and to undergo treatment for her mental health issues. There was a victim impact statement from the father with the judge saying that nothing can be done in this court to alleviate the stress and upset to a father who has the difficult responsibility of providing care for her. You're right, which is why it is somewhat baffling that woman is not in prison. I should state, my view is quite simple, really. I don't care if you have depression. The moment you abuse a child, the sentence is lengthy. 300 hours community service, essentially, is not a sentence. It is a joke. Are your prisons full, perhaps? Have you considered top and tailing them? Why not make them all make their own prison and then stick them inside it? There you go, you saved some costs. Now, I do want to add a little more to this. 
to give you, the audience, a little more context. One of the incidents that involved an injury came when Miss Souter, or woman, had gone for a bath and had come back to find the baby silent, limp and lifeless because the child was not breathing properly and she had not stayed with her, with the baby gasping for breath around four times a minute. Naturally, the father came, took the child in ambulance to the hospital. Miss Woman was then noted by the person in the car to have been acting completely normal and complaining about missing a possible hair appointment. Just a minor detail, but something that shows not quite sure how she has that kind of mentality. Blood samples did confirm that there was no medical explanation that would account for her presentation and injuries, so they couldn't find a health problem there. A probe was then launched by the police and social workers. That's when the claim of rocking the child and maybe bumping head off a table came up. The leg fracture at the time was described as a rotational injury. I did some digging. I always thought rotational injury was when something had caused a brain injury, where you'd had a short, sharp shock. You'd stopped suddenly, and that had caused the injury. Well, I've learned something now. During the investigation, they also noticed on her internet search that woman had looked at what happens if a baby is hit, claiming that this was because she was researching back slaps when the child had not been breathing. X. Now, I don't truly care about the struggles of woman. I just want woman put on blast in this particular case because I don't believe the correct sentence has been issued. I firmly believe the sentence should be custodial, but as it has been noted in a number of articles, the police and social services and child protection have refused to release any information or statements with regards to this case, meaning a lot of it does come from what was heard in the courtroom alone. Which is a little unfortunate. A little more information would certainly provide clarity on those mitigating circumstances. But I'm genuinely sat here thinking, there are none. There are none that justify you harming a child, especially when you are found guilty of it, which seems to be the big thing. You pled guilty to some pretty severe charges. The sentence is prison. With this particular case, I would very much like to know what you all think. I'm going to link three separate articles on this. If you are at all interested, please look at them and tell me what you think of what you see and what you believe the sentence should be. So if I don't see you over on Twitch tonight, I hope you'll have a lovely Monday, and thank you all for listening.